Today, yes, you came to learn how to cook easily Filipino cuisine. And uh, it's very important to understand, first of all, a little bit of a background on the Philippines because that will tell you about the food. Always the history, I don't have to tell, you know, uh, vice principals and principals and teachers and mothers that history always gives you the insight. First of all, we are an archipelago of over 7,100 islands. Divided into three major regions. The north is Luzon, which is where Manila is. The central is called Visayas, where my husband is from. And then the south is Mindanao. The three regions of 7,000 over 7,100 islands, obviously there's many indigenous vegetation. So the food itself is like all countries, it depends on what's available and what's readily available and what is delicious. Ours has, happens to be very similar to a lot of the Asian cuisine, uh, but there is a difference with Filipino, and I'll tell you why. We share coconut, for example, with the Thais and the Malays, we, and we share also ginger, any root vegetables from the Philippines. Basically, we have uh, the same ingredients, but what makes it a little bit different is the Philippines has Indo-Malay and Borneo beginnings. Some people say it was part of the same land mass and perhaps an earthquake split it into the islands and the Malaysia, Indonesia, and Borneo was the closest. And so that is the original or the roots of the Philippines. This picture here shows you the next step, the, the trading, galleon trading, it's called, in the 1600s, or some people call it the barter trade. This is when many explorers were looking for the spice route to China, and they stopped. You know, many traders stopped in the Philippines, and here we have the Saudi, here we go, the, we call them the Rajas, okay? Uh, actually, Manila, before the Spanish colonization, was primarily Muslim, which is interesting. And we have the Chinese traders that visited, that brought us the lovely noodle and our love for spring rolls. And we have a hustling, bustling trade, if you can imagine, before the Spaniards. And then the Spaniards came, and they stayed and they stayed and stayed the colonized state again for over 300 years their cuisine influenced the filipino cuisine my theory is when i've met filipinos around the world here in north america and in the philippines and i would have to say the reason might be because we're very open People. I don't know if any of you know Filipinos. We are the fourth largest ethnic group in Toronto. So chances are you have one in the workplace or perhaps even in your family. But the Filipino people, I've met one thing there, I, I say to other cultures and other visitors, they've always been open, very welcoming, and open and curious. And also the creative spirit of the Filipino, I think is the reason why many of these cultural influences wound up in what we call Filipino cuisine. I remit mingiti sa bawat padala. Are you craving some ramen? Hokkaido Santoka Ramen brings you the best Japanese ramen in Toronto. The first restaurant opened in 1988 in Japan, serving only nine customers at the time. Since then, Santoka's fame has grown, serving many happy customers in over 50 locations worldwide. Visit us and experience the taste of Santoka in downtown Toronto at 91 Dundas Street East. Or call us at 647-748-1717. 
Personal injury claims are not a game. Don't let your insurance company play with your health, peace of mind, and future. The Risotto Law Firm cares about your needs and rights. You have rights, and we can help. And remember, we don't get paid until you get paid. You have rights, and we can help. And our hope is to share Filipino cuisine with people of other cultures. That's the number one sentence in my mission statement, which I wrote on the first day. And we want to present it in a cultural environment where you can experience both the food and the culture. And we usually have music. And at the same time, we want to do it in a, with well-being and health in mind. Having been brought up in North America, that was my privilege of being aware of, you know, fats and, you know, uh, gluten, vegan, veg and so that is, I think, the reason why Casa Manila is, uh, I think we do a good, we, we, we're full, uh, so the, pe the people are the ones to speak and we seem to be growing. And so that is the, our hope is that you will enjoy it and you will also learn how to cook it. I also was working with the director of food and beverage for the city of Toronto, Michael Wilson. I, we, somebody connected us and I invited him for lunch. Oh, by the way, this is Marlon. Hi. Marlon Hi, is Marlon. our cook, our chief cook. And um, he, I invited him for lunch here and he said to me, hey, why don't you develop a line of sauces? You know, one of my challenges at home is what am I going to feed the kids? They don't even want sandwiches anymore. And I can't keep buying them sushi, right? So uh, I said, well, you know what? I'm interested, help me if uh, you know, I'd like to do that. So he, hooked, he basically connected me with George Brown College, which is, we you know the culinary school there. And they have what's called the Innovative Kitchens. So they take our recipe and develop it into bulk. It took two years. Uh, we also applied for a government grant, which we got for multiculturalism and health. And so together, after two years, we developed the three sauces. The three sauces we're going to be working with here, and this is why, is kare kare, or our savory peanut sauce. We love peanuts. And this is our this is not just peanut butter. We don't use peanut butter because of the trans fat that's in it. So it's made with real peanuts. And so through George Brown, we developed a bulk recipe which we are now making in Vaughan, okay? With a sterilized kitchen. The second sauce, of course, over 7,100 islands, coconuts abound, plenty. So it's our coconut, Ginger sauce, or ginataan, is the Tagalog. The third one, as Joanne is, is familiar with, is adobo. Adobo is actually not exclusively Filipino because you have Mexican adobo and Spanish. It has Latin roots. Adobo is actually a technique, a technique using vinegar because vinegar will preserve the meats, okay? And in those days, refrigeration was a luxury, and especially in the islands of 7,100, where electricity is not always available, the adobo technique, or the adobo, is our national dish using vinegar. The other adobo dishes from other countries have paprika. Ours is soy sauce and garlic. So if you go to the roots, bawang, sibuyas, kamatis, fish sauce, because plentiful fish, we dry the fish and make it into a sauce. And the other one is bagoong. Bagoong is little tiny, like microscopic shrimps almost. And it's harvested with a fine net. And then they dry it, and then they pound it, and then they make it into a paste. And this bagoong, it's similar to the strength of the anchovy, quite strong. And then we cook it up here at Casa Manila. Ginigisa namin sa bawang, sibuyas, at kamatis. We take tomato, garlic, onions, and we saute it together and cook it, and that's bagoong. Shish kebabs. 
you can use either chicken breast or chicken dark meat. And what we've done is we've half cooked it because you don't want to sit here and wait, you know, watch it cook for 20 minutes. So just, just before you came, we half cooked it. And this is something you can do as well when you're entertaining. You know, just before you know your guests come, you know, half cook it or bake it or, or, or barbecue it. And all we used is salt and pepper. That's it. Okay? And you salt according to your preference or health. And then, because we are inclusive, and I think that's also a reason for our growth, because having been brought up in, uh, in uh, Canada, I'm very conscious of being inclusive to vegetarians, gluten-free, vegans. So here we have, and also too, for we all want to eat light, right? For the summer, and we don't want, we want guilt-free eating. We want to mix it up a bit, right? So this is a delicious way to do shish kebabs, very healthy. Okay, tofu with red bell pepper, green bell pepper, and red onions, cured. Again, uh, Marlon prepared it. How did you prepare the tofu so they know the uh, method? Uh, we do first, uh, we deep fry the tofu. And then we put then it on paper towels. Paper towel, dry first, and then we stir it with uh, bell pepper and onion. It's up to you if, if you want something, any kind of uh, vegetable. I don't think you need to blanch. Uh, and then did you grill it after that? Yeah, after that, you grill it. And if any kind of sauce you want, you can put it. Right, so you don't have to pre-cook it. And actually, we believe that the more, well, it's studies show that the more you cook a vegetable, the more nutri you're cooking the nutrients out of it. So as much as possible, that is one of the modifications we made in Filipino cuisine is we actually, uh, the original the vegetables were always overcooked traditionally. And that's because of the lack of refrigeration. If you're buying from the marketplace, you want to make sure that the bacteria is completely cooked out. But here in, in uh, Canada, we can enjoy crisp vegetables. So that's what we serve in our restaurant. Okay. So now we're ready. All that's in here is just the sauce. We roasted peanuts, fish sauce, cornstarch, garlic powder, because you can't use fresh when you're doing bulk and you want a, a longer expiry date. And then annatto is uh, like a chuete. You know annatto, it's a little red seed. And it's, it's really for color, but it has this very subtle taste like saffron. And I asked Frank, Frank, do you think we could take out the fish sauce so we can make it vegan? And we'd still get the same taste profile? He said, let's try it. So now we're using sea salt instead of fish sauce. So we can say it's no MSG in our cooking. It's very mild. Yeah, that's very nice. Now, If, if you notice, it's a very, very subtle taste, very, isn't it? Very nice. Yeah, because a lot of the coconut you're, you're tasting has uh, either curry with it or some sort of a shrimp paste. But what we Filipinos, we like it, you know, mixed up, but we also love it pure. This one is, you know, if you know in an ingredient list, you always look at the, it's always listed according to what the majority of the ingredient is. This is coconut milk, and it has... Um, also, the one thing that we couldn't avoid is that I wanted it really pure. It's not that I'm a purist, but I said, hey, when you take a step, you can't kind of stop. You know, you have you keep going. There is sulfite in here, okay? Sulfite keeps it from going great, okay? And it, it's not as harmful, what I uh, have researched, but most coconut milks has that. We couldn't get around that unless I was going to accept that it was going to start turning gray in your milk. No. Okay, we have uh, cream coconut as well. We have garlic, ginger, cornstarch, salt, brown sugar, and dehydrated vegetables, onions, and carrots, and natural flavors. So all of that in this bottle, imagine. Coconut, garlic, ginger, onions, carrots. Okay, the last one is the adobo, and the ingredient list is cider vinegar, brown sugar, soy sauce, garlic, bay leaf, 
and black pepper. Bay leaf is our, it's like the oregano for the Greeks and the Italians. Bay leaf is for us. That has a slightly stronger taste, okay, because of the vinegar by itself. It might not be as, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you did. It's very strong. Oh, you don't delicious. need a lot. Oh, it's delicious. I don't get it. It's delicious. Thank you. Oh, this is so good. They're all so good. Don't you like it? Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> so fucking good. Yeah, it's so good. This is what I'm suggesting. Treat it like a fondue barbecue. Wouldn't that be interesting? So if you have like a crock pot, like the single one, you know you have it there on your buffet table, right? You have your setting there. Yeah, maybe they, you want to taste it one at a time or do you want it all together? We've got quite a bit of food. Now we're going to get ready for the skillets. Actually, it's better if we plate it for you and you can share it. I think it's better that way. You'll be able to enjoy it. love our pork. Sibuyas, onion. Then, kamatis, tomato. Then he put the pork. the pork. Again, I like to use tenderloin, the pork tenderloin, because it's easy to cut, and it's soft. And there's no fat. Very little, right? And it's very soft. Just a little bit of water. Water. Just a little bit. Just to, just to keep it from drying up. And then he just put in the shrimp. My Done! Mikol Express! You have another dish. Awesome. Everything is so <laughs> So I took some pork back ribs, a rack. I put it in a plastic or a glass container. I used half of the bottle and threw it on. I didn't salt or pepper it on purpose. Okay? And then I marinated it overnight, covered. The next day, I popped it into my oven. I always like to sear my roast first. Cause, uh, so I always put it up in 400 to 450 because if you sear the outside, it locks the, the, the fibers and then the juice is trapped inside, which will cook it. So you sear it first at 450, you know, just by turning it up. And when you start to see that the, the, the outer part, the coat is actually tight and brown and the juice is no longer, you know, pouring out, you've seared the meat and then I turn it back down to 350 or 325 depending on your oven and depending on how much time you have. 350 is the standard, 325 
if you've got time, if you're doing gardening or you know, if you're at home, because I like to slow cook. Use this as a glaze, the other half of the bottle, with a brush. We use a silicone brush, or you know, don't use the paintbrush because that might get it there. But because you do, you have to glaze it. You know, so as it starts to cook, paint the glaze, and then. And again, according to how you like your meat prepared, I like to put a little bit of parsley because I'm a visual, you know, and you have adobo pork back ribs. And I want to see, like, if it can stand alone. I remit mengiti sa bawat padala. Are you craving some ramen? Hokkaido Santoka Ramen brings you the best Japanese ramen in Toronto. The first restaurant opened in 1988 in Japan, serving only nine customers at the time. Since then, Santoka's fame has grown, serving many happy customers in over 50 locations worldwide. Visit us and experience the taste of Santoga in downtown Toronto at 91 Dundas Street East. Or call us at 647-748-1717. Personal injury claims are not a game. Don't let your insurance company play with your health, peace of mind, and future. The Risotto Law Firm cares about your needs and rights. You have rights and we can help. And remember, we don't get paid until you get paid. You have rights and we can help. We use kawalis here, which are Filipino. Um, yes, so there you go. And then you can do a platter with the adobo. Grilled platter. Or if you have crispy, dipping sauces. It's very versatile, these sauces. It can be a fondue sauce, a dipping sauce, a cooking sauce, a finishing sauce, a glaze. It's up to you. I like some provinces, some regions, they, they combine these two. Adobo is combined with the coconut. So when you say adobo to them, their coconut, ha their adobo has coconut in this particular region. How The skillet is higher. Yeah. The skillet is should high. Be high. Yeah. Right, should be hot. So I don't put a lot, I, I, I do tablespoons and tape, but it's up to you. So how much do you think we're going to use of this? Four tablespoons. Only half, so let's measure. So half cup. This one is one cup. Half cup. Half. You're saying up to one half cup. I say one third to one half. Or do the tablespoon thing. It depends, everybody's different. Very subjective. So, see how much you use? That's all. Plate it. Okay, rather than, you will, you will see it plated, but right now we'll just show it to you in the skillet. So it, the connection between the cooking and the presentation is there. You would put the red onion at the top. Some people will want to saute it with. I prefer to saute it with. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed uh, your cooking. And uh, as I said, the uh, instructions are here. We will have recipes too where you can make salad dressings. It's now in the works, so different ways in which you can use your sauces. Mm. Thank you. And Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.